Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Let us begin this morning with uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn. 0345 606 0973 is the number you need. There are two stories involving him in the newspapers today. One is a coup d'etat, apparently being plotted by senior front benches. The report in The Independent, and it looks very kosher, this, I have to tell you. It, it, the report in The Under Independent explains that some front benches who've agreed to serve under the left-wing leader are determined to topple him well before the general election and they're now chatting about tactics. One option on the table is a series of orchestrated resignations. If Mr Corbyn does badly in next May's contest for the London Mayor, the Scottish Parliament elections, which are coming up in the same month, and the Welsh Assembly and Local Authority elections. So people who've agreed to serve with him are reportedly already planning to defenestrate him. The other story involves his policy-making units or his policy key policy positions being seized by Corbyn sceptics, being seized by people who've gone on the record, including the MP John Woodcock, who reportedly turned the air blue at a recent event while giving his views on Mr Corbyn's leadership. These people are moving in to the chair of Labour policy committees. I mean, it's a wonderful exercise of democracy in some ways, but it is another example in others of how Jeremy Corbyn has effectively got as many problems within his own party as he has with the opposition. And I'm going to make this a little bit personal, I think, because I want you to make it personal when you ring me. I, I would really like to get behind the idea that there is a meaningful challenge to the narrative of subsidised tax cuts for the people who've already got a few quid by taking more and more money away from the people who haven't. I don't even think that's a political observation anymore. I think people can... I mean, people are a little bit reluctant to put their hand up in the air and say, yes, that's exactly what I'm in favour of. They pretend that they're trying to give people back dignity or trying to wean people off welfare dependency, and it was persuasive for a while. But I think what Osborne's done with the tax credit cuts makes it pretty clear, pretty clear that it is now uh, an ideological drive to effectively reduce the amount of tax that wealthy people pay or relatively wealthy people pay by taking away the money that people at the bottom of society currently have access to. You, the best proof of that was probably when the needle moved and nobody noticed because when they got in, it was all supposed to be about... Uh, uh, the unemployed. Remember the feckless work shy layabouts? The, the generation that has never worked? The families where three generations have never had a job? That's what it, You remember that? That's how, that's how it was sold to us. We're going to go after those people there. And it worked because we get up in the morning, you drag your carcass out of bed, you look over the road, someone's still got the curtains shut. They even used that line, didn't they? Didn't they even use that line? I, I was just spouting in my normal fashion there, but actually I, that, that rang a bell. Didn't one of them come out with the line about having the curtains. I think they did. Anyway, you, you get out of bed in the morning, someone over the road's got the curtains shut. They might be on night shifts, you don't know, but you, you think in your mind, God, those blooming sponges, it's disgusting, it's disgraceful. And that's how you get the electoral appetite to, to close them down. But what they never said was, in fact, they'd be going after people who've got jobs. They'd be going after people who, who are in work, and now we know that they're on the chopping board too. I'd love to get behind someone who is opposed to that. I'd love to get behind someone who sees that as an inalienable fact of political life and is somehow capable of marshalling voters to see the same. I, I would, I'm sounding like Kevin flipping Keegan now, I'd love it, I'd love it, I would love it if I could just see what everyone who likes him is seeing, but I do not. I, I see a noble, principled, utterly ineffective politician who has absolutely no grasp of 21st century communications and the steepness and indeed the, the gradient of the mountain that will have to be climbed to persuade the unpersuaded that he has answers to anything. But I've got such, I've got such respect for you and I'm speaking now to, to the portion of people listening to the programme who like him. You've been in touch with me in some numbers lately, especially younger people, although I have to tell you, Ian's already been in touch, Say I'm 51 years old, James. I think Corbyn is my only hope. We spoke yesterday to a lot of people who, who feel 
disenfranchised, who feel squeezed, who feel uh, upset with the way things are unfolding. And, and a lot of them seem to think that Corbyn has some answers to their problems. I want you to tell me what it is you're seeing that the rest of the country is missing, okay? 03456060973. Um, you've said, get behind him then. In fact, there's a few messages coming in already. Get behind him then. Uh, help him then. Don't attack him. Well, why? You know what? I'm not going to start lying to people. I'm not going to start pretending to have enthusiasm for a politician because I've got such a deep dismay about the other lot. I, I, I can't do that. I think we probably all fell into that trap a little bit with Ed Miliband, didn't we? I don't know about Labour supporters on a, on a sort of grand scale, but I think everyone was sort of crossing their fingers and thinking things can't be quite as bad as they seem, can they? A uh, bacon sandwich, yeah, no big deal. Things can't be quite that bad, can they? Can they? And then, I guess for me, it was the moment they un unveiled the, uh, the men here, the gravestone was the point at which I think a lot of people must have gone, no, it's, it's every bit as bad as we feared it was. We had about a month of kidding ourselves in the run-up to the general election that he could mount a meaningful challenge to David Cameron and then reality dawned on the, uh, on the night of the general election. And, and I just see it all happening again. Sam in Redhill, I'm 52. Corbyn has my 100% support. Yorkshire lass, Labour Party in my blood. My ancestry takes it back to the 1930s. I voted for Corbyn. I'm an old lady of 70. I wasn't suggesting that no old people liked him. I was simply observing that the most passionate exponents of so-called Corbynism seem to be... Young, they're the ones telling me. The age 23 kept popping up, didn't it, a um, couple of weeks ago? Hi, James. Corbyn promises an alternative to the unfair government that we presently have to put up with. I'm surprised you don't get it. No, it, uh, perhaps you've become part of the establishment. Perhaps I have, but, but you're missing my point a little there, perhaps deliberately. I'd love to see a meaningful alternative to the unfair government that we presently have to put up with, but I don't see it in Jeremy Corbyn. I see a meaningless alternative to the government that we have to put up with. So... Which way round do you want to do this? 13 minutes after 10 is the time. You are listening to James O'Brien on LBC. The grassroots like him. People like Yorkshire Lass, though, who describe their Labour heritage as going right back to the 1930s. They like him too. People like Ian, who describes himself as 51, and Jeremy Corbyn as his last hope. They like him. Young people like him. A, a, a lot of idealistic young people seem to like him. A lot of the people protesting yesterday, not the idiots causing problems and setting fire to police cars, but the young, voiceless people who feel incredible levels of frustration at the moment, they seem to quite like him. <sighs> Nobody else does, sadly. The notion of him persuading a don't-know voter, the notion of him somehow winning over an undecided seems to me to be ridiculous. So... What I want you to do now is pick up your phone and call me, 0345 is the number you need, and just tell me what you think is going on here. You can either tell me why you like him or why you don't, or you can tell me what you think has happened with this weird dichotomy, this weird dichotomy between the persuaded, the converted minority, and the utterly ambivalent or unpersuaded majority. I don't quite get it. I hope you do. And maybe if you just tell me what it is that floats your boat, what it is that puts lead in your pencil, what it is that gets you excited about the guy, maybe you'll communicate to me via a process of sort of conversational osmosis a little bit of that Kool-Aid, a little bit of that magic dust. Because right now, still listening to Jeremy Corbyn supporters and hearing people tell me that they do believe in fairies, they do believe in fairies, they do believe in fairies, in a slightly desperate hope that fairies might turn out to be true. You are looking at two stories involving the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn. The first predicts a wave of resignations to force him out early next year. This from front bench Labour politicians who've agreed to serve under him for now, but remain determined to destabilise his leadership and pave the way for a coup. Um, and on the other side of the coin, well, it's actually it's the same side of the coin, isn't it? Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn could be facing a new battle after moderate MPs seized key policy-making Position. So he's got so many people spooked. He doesn't seem to me to have the Conservatives spooked, but he's drawing support from people that I would, well, I'd quite like to stand alongside. I just can't. What are you seeing that the rest of the country is not? 0345 Start in Westminster. Seems appropriate. Ken's there. Ken, good morning. What would you like to say? Hello there. Morning, James. Um, the way I see it is George Osborne um, represents 
corporation. He represents uh, the executive. Um, but who in Parliament represents the working class? Um, there's not many people in that group who can't be bought by money. You know, every man has his price. Um, what strikes me about Jeremy Corbyn is that he's going against the tide. But where are you getting that from? Where are you getting that from? Because this sounds like sort of, forgive me, it sounds a bit like a sort of teenage girl's crush. Uh, well, put it this way. As long where as where are you getting that, the idea that he's different from all the other politicians from? That's all I'm asking. I'm not, I, I don't mean to be rude. Because what he stands for... You what does he stand any, for? Any, anyone who's brave enough to stand up and use quantitative easing in a term for the working class, you have to sort of look at that and think, hold on a minute, what does that mean? Yeah, well, what, go on, tell me. Because it seems to me to mean sort of b b planting a seed in the hope that a magic money tree will grow. Well, that's, that's what the banks did to help themselves. So why, why can't the... He's only asking, why can't the people use the same magic to help the people right at the bottom? Yeah. We're not saying that people like you, James, shouldn't have the job and the wage you have, and you deserve it. But what I'm saying is that the standard at the bottom needs to be raised for the people who... Well, the last, the last Labour government increased the, the tax rate for the nation's highest earners, who I'm, you know, flattered that you include me among. Uh, the last Labour government did that. What, what's new? That's, that's what's new that's, about that's, Corbyn here? That's that's not the solution. So to 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 charge uh, the higher earners more money and kind of make them. Well, that's the definition of redistribution, the Ken. Um, I don't I don't think that there's a necessity for that. All right, let's start. Let's on. let's start again, okay? Because I think you're making more sense than me. But if I was to say that what you're describing to me is a mood rather than an intellectual position, would you be offended? Um. I wouldn't be offended. I respect every man's opinion, but... Um, <laughs> it, 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 I'm it, hearing a mood. I'm hearing a mood. I mean, we used to do this a lot with UKIP, and they'd, they'd make these sort of emotional statements about this, that, and the other, and then you'd try and pin them down on actual facts. And if it wasn't so tragic, it would be hilarious how few there were. So give me some facts. Like he stands for fairness. He stands for equality. He stands for this, that, and the other. Give me a fact rather than a feeling. Uh, well, I can only go by what the man says. Yeah, go on then. Well, give me the line then. Give me the line that provides you with economic confidence that many, many others aren't sharing. Well, incredibly, I'm not the most political person, but when I listen to the man speak, yeah. um, there's something about him that makes sense to me and that I believe. Oh, this is why I'm I jealous. Have. This is why I'm jealous, isn't it? Because I, 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 I want it to make sense to me. Here you go. Young, young people like Corbyn because they do not remember the economic mess Labour consistently made by spending too much of other people's money. That's what he's up against. Ignorant, ill-informed, Daily Mail-inspired epithets the, like that. The, the thing I see, James, is once they squeeze the lemons of all the poor people, it's, it's the next bracket up they'll be going after. You, you've got to understand, there's no limit to... But I believe that. I, I, I happen to believe that. I've been saying that for years. I just, I can't... I, 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 maybe it's sounding a bit strange now. It's almost like I've got a kind of... Uh, blinkers on. But, but I don't... What, what are you seeing that I'm not, apart from a bloke standing up and saying very, very attractive things that are supremely unelectable? Uh, I, see, I see hope. You know, the, the only chance... The, the only chance there is, because everybody else in that room who is making the choices in our lives... Is, isn't really um, living in our situation. They, they haven't walked today or, or much in, in the shoes of someone who gets up. Nor is, he, nor is he really. I mean, I, I, but, but you're right. Empathy, you don't actually, it's a ridiculous thing to suggest that you actually have to be homeless to have sympathy for homeless people, or indeed that you have to put Syrian people in your back bedroom to have sympathy for Syrian refugees. You're not going to help me here, are you? You've just got it, and I haven't at the moment. <laughs> You have to be truly in touch with the people to understand... Oh, save me, mate. The people are rejecting him hugely. It's a, it's a, it's a small number of grassroots activists and, and uh, members of the choir that are persuaded so far. That's just a statistical fact. You can't tell me I'm out of touch with the people. I'm out of touch with you, but I'm in touch with the massive majority of people. No, I, I, think, I think, unfortunately, um, the people at the bottom, uh, or what you look at in terms of salaries... Um, you, you've got a, an elite at the top, and they are way out of the, the atmosphere. They've, they've hit stratospheric power. 
Uh, and the people at the bottom have really forgotten about well, look, Let me read you a text. Here's a tweet from someone at the bottom. And this is the point that I think your lot are completely missing. Is This is where the narrative, wrongly and inaccurately, has been pushed. But you have people out there, apparently possessed of a fully functioning brain, who write about the myth of the so-called poor. This is from Stephen. That the threshold has risen because of all the benefits they get. Houses full of flat screens and video games. He's bang on. I mean, uh, that, that's, that's what we're up against. The notion that there aren't any poor people anymore. I could open up the phone lines now. And there are actually people out there with uh, people who are allowed to drive cars who will say that because you've got a mobile phone, you can't possibly be poor. And you're, you're sticking up for people who are poor in a country where the media narrative is telling you they don't exist. So why, why is Corbyn pulling this off? Why is he attractive to people like you? Keith's in Shoreditch. Um, from Ken to Keith, all the case today. Keith, what have you got? Hello, mate. Um, yeah, my uncle here is... We believe that the market is going to answer all our prayers, yeah? And no, I don't. Neo-capitalists do, but, but I, I don't personally. Well, I think a lot of people run along with that one, and that's what we've been running along with Gordon for Brown didn't. three decades. He seemed to be very much on the side of big business, though, didn't he? What does that even mean, Keith? What does that even... I'm going to have one of those mornings, aren't I? If you open a coffee shop you've yeah. got, and you're a small business, you've got no chance because you're up against Starbucks and Costa. So what's Corbyn you know, going to do for them? What's Corbyn going to do for small... Why are you talking to me about coffee shops? Why not? Because, uh, because if you're a small business... I'm just using that as an example. If you're a small business, you're up against it because all the time, the big business... What did you, but what is Corbyn going to do for you? OK, here I am. I've just opened a little coffee shop in Kidderminster and there's a Starbucks over the road and I need help. What's Jeremy going to do for me, mate? Well, hopefully he's not going to do anything. Hopefully he's well, why Murphy are you talking about it, then? Richard, Richard Murphy, who is, who is his tax uh, advisor, has always said... You know, if you're looking at Richard Murphy and, and, and what he says about tax evasion... Well, I've read his book, I mean, The Joy of Tax. I know exactly who you're right. talking about. You, you, you're going to have to trust me on this. I'm not coming to this as an innocent or an ignorant. No, I'm just no, coming no, to this no, as someone no, who no, wants, no, wants no. to get on the bus, but everybody who's on the bus is just sort of talking gibberish to me. Well, that, that's not gibberish. If we can get... If we can get you're talking about coffee business. shops. I'm talking about small business. If All we right. can get these big businesses to pay their, share, their fair share of tax, small businesses... We have to make more money, and that will feed through to the rest of us. It's just a different way of thinking about it. You know. No, but again, that's something that theoretically, historically, I would agree with. That, that all of these, no, I just don't understand why you think Corbyn's the man to deliver it. And, and the most interesting exchange I've witnessed from the pros, rather than the, the amateurs like ours, the pros, the most um, interesting exchange is when I've seen one, I can't remember who it was, but, but Philip Collins, who's a big Blairite, was effectively saying these people would rather espouse principles than than be in power and politics is all about winning power and and I, I don't know maybe i've been in this game too long to me to stand up with principles that are all shiny and box fresh but in the knowledge that you're never going to get elected just seems a waste of time maybe i've gone too far maybe i've turned maybe you're right um and I'm, i don't want to have a scrap today i really don't i i, I want to sort of understand a little better the passion for jeremy corbyn because it's a morning upon which we've learned his own front bench colleagues are planning to defenestrate him. A coup could well be underway by shortly after Christmas and simultaneously uh, many of his critics within the party who didn't accept front bench positions or didn't get offered them have seized key policy positions chairing the policy committee. So you've got a man that's um, the former shadow chancellor Chris Leslie who's described Corbyn's economic policy as guaranteed to lead to higher inflation and higher cost of living. He's got a committee he's chairing the treasury committee you've got Ian Austin who tweeted I'm getting a little tired of the self-indulgent comfort zone fantasy that Corbyn could ever persuade mainstream voters to make him PM. Um, he's going to be chairing the Justice Committee, no, the Education Committee, while Shab Shabana Mahmood, who said she strongly disagreed with Mr Corbyn's economic policies, will be chairing the Justice Committee. That is a shambles, right? But he's got something that some people find deeply, deeply attractive. I want to know what it is. Robert's in Sittingbourne. Robert, what's going on? Oh, good morning, James. Hello, uh, you want a bit of flesh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Don't put it like that. You make me sound like a pervert. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> um, you're talking about coffee shops. Well, one um, mm. policy of Jeremy is to introduce an investment bank to help small businesses. Um, there's a new, the investment starvation by the big banks. There are lots of good business, small businesses going to the wall because the banks were not invest in them. Um, well, uh, that's one... No, you mean they're going to the wall because they're not making enough money, is what you're telling me? No, that's not 
quite well. Um, if you could get some small business people on the phone, you'd well, find. You can't do that. Phone. You can't ring me up to tell me what I'm missing and then say, "Oh no, sorry, I'm not the man for this." You need to get well, someone um, else on the. You've just told me a lot of businesses are failing, which historically um, would suggest that a lot of businesses aren't making enough money to survive. Jeremy Corbyn's going to give them money to help them. What's wrong with customers giving them the money? That's not the only. Re you well know the. That's not the only reason reason businesses fail. If banks refuse to uh, lend them money to invest... Uh, but you're not even uh, talking from... Don't make me sound like a monster, Rob. You're not even talking from experience. You're talking about some theoretical oh, small business people that. who might ring me up later. Talk to me from Robert in Sittingbourne's perspective. Oh, what, is, okay. what is attractive okay. about this man? OK. Well, that's one... Uh, one no, it's not. That's been scratched. What is attractive about this man from your position? Not something that well, someone who might ring in later might tell me if we're all lucky. Well, OK, OK. Well, uh, I could tell you about his honesty and integrity, but that's separate. Um, uh, Renationalising the railways will be a very good move. Now, you can't say that's not popular because uh, opinion polls show a majority of people want the railways to be renationalised. Isn't that so? And, well, his, his m mode of doing it, just talk me through the detail. Um, well, as, as the franchises come up for renewal, is a cheap way of doing it. So if, um, if you know you're going to lose your franchise when you're currently in position running a railway line or, or, or a railway company, why the hell would you spend any money at all on the future infrastructure well, if you know it's been taken away from you at the end of the contract? Well, they've got contractual obligations. They must... Uh, why would they go beyond those contractual obligations in any well, way, shape or form? Well, uh, I'm a regular traveller on the railways. I don't see... Well, I'm a regular traveller on the railways as well. It doesn't qualify me to comment upon the wisdom of Jeremy Corbyn's proposals. Can I just finish? Um, I don't actually see the private railway companies going beyond their contractual obligations. Um, in fact, in my pers I've been travelling on the railways for over 40 years plus, and um, I don't actually see much improvement in the rail. Uh, I don't really? You think, you think the trains that you're travelling on are the same ones you were travelling on 40 years ago? Mate, you need to get a new season ticket. And back, back to Corbyn. I, I haven't satisfactorily expressed my own position, but I feel I've talked more than enough already. So, so just, just briefly, I'd love to get it. My problem is that for all the passion and support I hear and see, none of it will persuade the unpersuaded. None of it will win an election. And surely that has to be the single most important priority for any party leader wanting to win elections. No? It could be that I'm missing something even, even that simple. Um, in the meantime, though, I, I haven't got this right. I'm sorry. Nobody's perfect. I haven't quite articulated my confusion about Jeremy Corbyn's popularity. I'm just trying to get underneath it in a way that I have failed to do so far. People kind enough to call in and try to explain it to me have, perhaps I'm being a blinkered or, or, or willfully blind, they've sounded like fans rather than perhaps advocates. I go, what is it you would sell? What would you use to persuade that person there that he is a potential prime minister? That's what I'm missing. But it could be my fault. Susan's in Dover. Susan, what would you like to say? Uh, hello, Jane. Hello, Susan. Um, I do not vote Tory or Labour, but I am impressed by what Ger Jeremy Corbyn has been saying. Okay. He's open about being a socialist. He's not ashamed for saying this. And the establishment are worried are they? and feel threatened regarding what he's saying. Otherwise, the right-wing media wouldn't be attacking him. As oh, the right-wing media attacks because everybody. They attacked Ed Miliband. Uh, they've attacked Ed the Balls. They've attacked Jerry. Come on, uh, they called Ed Miliband's they, they, dad they, a man who hated his own country. Since, since exactly. And they keep making oh, connections between this, that and the other in a very negative way, as if we're real fools and can't see what they're doing. Well, and they were nice and about we, Gordon Brown, we, were they, Susan? And and um, also, uh, he's been answering questions directly to yeah, the that's media, true. which he has, which other politicians do not do. And Farage, Farage and claims he does. By that BBC um, political uh, chap, he that he does not uh, rehearse interviews, mm. whereas we know that the other politicians do, like David Cameron, etc. That they do. I mean, even on Channel Four News the other night, John. He said to Jon Snow, oh, I've answered that question. And Jon Snow said to Cameron, no, you haven't. Mm. Like that. Uh, and he so, said, I, I mean, you chalk this said, up. Well, look, at question time. Go on. Cameron, um, Cameron has, does not and cannot answer the questions that have been put to him. And he's had Cameron saying, oh, I'm delighted with the tax credit cuts. Yes? Whereas Jeremy makes public how... It affects the ordinary person. And last uh, this week he was saying how veteran, that he'll be £2,000 worse off with the cuts. 
this mm. is how it's going to uh, pop. I, uh, I, do you know? I don't know. So hang on, Susan. I, 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 hang on. The ordinary I, person. Have you got your phone upside down? Um, oh, more than likely. You yeah, are pushing me in the right direction. I can yeah. somehow, something in what you're saying to me is resonating in a way that a lot of the other contributors haven't. And I don't know why, because you're not really putting any more flesh on the bones. You're just express. And it, sa it sounds like more than hope and fingers crossed and I believe in fairies. It's it, You just think it's a work in progress. and that he's That's right. Well, I think it's early days and you're being impatient. Uh, quite frankly, you're expecting something big to happen. No, I'm not. I, make, I just want to feel like you feel. Uh, well, uh, because there are discussions and democracy. He wants to bring democracy back, doesn't he? He's wanting the party and the people to be involved in the decisions. And that doesn't happen overnight, does it? No, you're, um, you're absolutely right. And he's saying uh, that he wants to renationalise railways and public services. And these are things that affect the ordinary people. These are things I like. Yeah, and we want these institutions because they help the ordinary person. They're there that we can fall back on if we need them, whereas mega-rich people, they don't need to worry about these things. Uh, they can afford to pay for so anything will you vote for when him? they need it. Well, Oof. I'm a Green Party member, okay. So um, because they are socialists, whereas this man is a socialist. And uh, you know he's telling the truth because of what he is saying. And I believe that he will renationalise things. But you've got but seventeen. You've got seventeen so-called moderates now leading the parliamentary Labour Party's policy committees. How, how, if his opponents are running the policy committees, are, are, are you hanging on to your optimism that he's going to bring in policies that will? Because of the way he's bringing in democracy, that people at grassroots are going to be making decisions within the party. And when these other people, these MPs, who are in opposition to him, when he sees how the further is there at the grassroots, how they are supporting Jeremy Corbyn, because you're saying that it is these youngsters. Yes, people, it is. Not just youngsters. Want, once they are able to put forward how they feel, when these MPs are actually aware of how the people feel, then they're going to be fools to go against what... The people who I am going to. I think I'm going to keep you on speed dial, Susan, if that's all right. <laughs> with you. And the thing is, we know what he stands for. He gives a clear mass message, unlike Miliband, and he is not talking about the poor, but the ever widening gap between the mega rich and poor, which he wants to address. And I believe he will if he's given a chance. Do you think he'll get a chance? Well, this is what we've got to hope for, because this is what people are trying to shut him down for. Oh, no, and now you make me sound like one of them. And that's why everybody feels great that he's there. Because well, not everybody hope. does, but I, no, I have a much... I mean the people that have been phoning you, yeah, tr explaining to you why they think it is, about uh, the uh, small businesses, etc. They want to, because they see that, is what affects their lives. And so, so, so what you have described, which should be electoral gold, is a revolution in a sense, a quiet revolution from a belief, economic and political, that by looking after the larger businesses, you look after society because everything eventually sort of shifts or trickles around. And you're saying what he offers is a sense that the help will be offered more directly to individuals and, and smaller institutions and businesses. That's right. Well, small businesses employ... But the Conservatives the just got elected. No, hang on. The cons I'm, I'm thinking out loud, Susan. Stop interrupting me when I'm interrupting <laughs> you. The Conservatives won a general election on effectively saying that we should be giving less help to everybody. Uh, will you say that the um, Tories won an election on this? If you think... The majority of people didn't vote Tory. They vote for different parties. And because we don't have proportional representation, it's the Tories that won because it was first past the post. But the majority of people aren't behind the Tories. No, but that doesn't matter, does it, in terms no, of winning... No, because, because of our voting system. Yes, but I, 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 our voting system, for all its flaws, does at least deliver a leader who can get things done. So the notion of Jeremy Corbyn leading some form of coalition is, is, is uniquely depressing because, of course, he's so at odds with not only members of his own party but obviously with the prevailing winds on the other side of the House. I, I, I'd, I'd love you a bit, Susan, in a, in a kind of respectful way because I, I, I get it in a way now, but it still feels... It still feels closer to an emotion than, a, than, a, than an intellectual position. And yet, as a few of you have pointed out, it doesn't matter what supporters of what party you would be talking to, if you really insisted that people give you um, 
uh, detail, James, the people you want facts and policies and this sort of thing, then most supporters of most parties would struggle to, to provide you with what you're asking for. Um, last word, I think, to Fliss, who's in Cambridgeshire. It will have to be brief, Fliss, because I fell in love with Susan a little bit and, and have run out of time. Yeah, I fell in love with Susan as well, James. <laughs> I thought she said lots of really good things. I just got one simple point to add mm. to that, and you actually led into it brilliantly. Wow. I believe that Jeremy Corbyn studied at Cambridge. He's an academic, but he's also Don't got he a did. hefty dose of emotional intelligence. That's where we are lacking in this country. For eons, this, go- this country has been ruled by governments that are academics. There's very little emotional intelligence. And the people that tend to be attracted to James are more likely to be people who have a good dose of emotional intelligence, like myself. You sh- yeah, I, 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 I like that. Uh, I'm just going to correct a couple of things. You said James instead of Jeremy. No one's attracted to James. And I'm I, sorry. I, I, no, that's quite all right. Freudian slip, Fliss. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it there, I think. Um, and he didn't go to Cambridge University. I, I, don't think, I think he dropped out of, of, a, of a London university. I'll double check that. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't undermine any of your points. It's just I, I wouldn't want people to go away and repeat those comments uh, and be giggled at. I've been